Well, I didn't get to anodizing the pens yesterday, um, but I optimized a bunch of code, so, uh, or code for the grip patterns on the pen, so I'm a few hours behind today, but I'm gonna be a few days ahead um, when the batch, or the pre-sale launch goes live. Uh, it's going live tomorrow, it means nothing to you guys because these videos are a week delayed from when you're watching them. Uh, but if you want reminders in the future, there's links below. Um, anyways, let's get on to the fun stuff. The air going to the big lathe goes through this desk and filter before going to the internals of it just to help dry the air. Um, it uses about five pounds of desiccant and I find I can get about a week of use out of it before I have to uh, replace it with fresh desiccant and dry the old stuff. Not as good as an active air dryer, um, but uh, that's probably the next piece of equipment I'll buy is an active air dryer. Here I'm just touching off some tools to machine a pen tip uh, and then I hit the go button and realized I didn't have a center drill in the lathe. I, just, I blew it up the last run so I put a new one in, um, just checking all the clearances, making sure uh, I didn't you know, move anything around or change anything in the process uh, and then once everything is happy we'll go ahead and run the machine. Now normally I would run this machine with the door th doors closed because uh, oil goes everywhere um, but in the uh, in the pursuit of trying to get you some footage um, I'm just uh, letting you peer through the through the door I'm also closing the door during the tool changes because uh, as, as the turret spins it slings oil everywhere and oil has a habit of just kind of getting tracked everywhere if I don't keep it contained so there's our pen tip And this is the part um, and main reason why the pens cost what they cost. Uh, so here I'm applying the satin finish to the pen. This is going to be a fade anodized inverted pen. Um, but to get that satin finish, it's all done by hand. Uh, this is just basically wet sanding it to get a pleasing pattern. I wet sand all the parts um, and then we go to anodizing. I don't want to round over the edges of the pocket clip pocket. Uh, so I put this little 3D printed spacer in place uh, during all that polishing stage and then just pop it out uh, once it's all done. That way the edges stay nice and crisp uh, and it fits up well. Normally I don't use acetone for any cleaning, um, but from that oil contamination issue uh, from a few episodes back, um, I decided to try it for this batch. This is going to just be a pen for photographing, uh, so if it goes horribly wrong, uh, it's not it's not sold to a customer already. Um, I'm also doing all the cleaning just by hand um, because I don't feel like heating up the big ultrasonic for just this single pen. Go through all the anodizing stages. Here we're going to bring it to a purple. It's the first color in the fade, and then we're going to fade it up to teal. I'm fading it really quickly. You can see just the end is purple and it fades quickly to teal. Um, that's because this is going to be an inverted pen, so most of that anodizing layer is going to be stripped off, and I want the whole pattern to be visible in the grip, which is why it's in such a narrow band. Next we just color match all the parts. Uh, they don't match perfectly at the same voltage, uh, so there's a little bit of fine adjust um, to get them visually perfect. Um, and that's part of the reason the fade anodized pens cost the most, is just doing the color matching. Here we do the tip, or the clip I should say, and uh, then all pen, all pen parts are finished. Now we can remove all of it to get the uh, inverted effect. It's so the same thing, polishing it just like we polished it initially. Uh, being careful not to round over any of the features. You don't want to round over the bolt slot or anything. I want just all the low-lying areas to retain that nice rainbow pattern. Which looks super good when you nail it. Yeah, I'm a big fan of this one. Here you can see how fast that pattern has to be because there's only a short section of grip where it has to appear and I want all the colors to appear there, or all the colors in this spectrum anyways. Well, that one came out um, way cooler looking than I expected. I had to just make this for the um, images on the presale because I didn't have a uh, inverse rainbow. Um, but yeah, I'm a big fan of that one. Um, the other colors, uh, I'm not gonna have pictures of because uh, I haven't made them yet, um, and I'm not gonna make three more of these um, because I don't have the pens for it. So um, not even like lubricated or anything yet. Just. Just slapped it together. Um, yeah, I'm a fan. I don't even know if I want to sell this one. I might want to keep this one. Probably sell it. Cool. Oh, and also, um, whoever's watching this video, if you buy, um, if you ever do watch it, if you buy 295, um, that was the pen in this video. It's the first rainbow frag I ever made. So yeah, I have a needle um, insert or needle uh, refill in it right now. But yeah, I'm a fan. And because I'm like a child and can't wait, um, I modified the bottom of my printer so I could replace the FEP sheet. I put a bunch of 256 screws to hold just a standard sheet in there. I still have the ones coming from the manufacturer. I just didn't want to wait. Anyways, this is staring down into that printer, by the way. Kind of cool. You can see the projector. Besides the point, this episode's over. I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.